in this video let us look at uh, neoplasms of larynx so neoplasm here uh, they are talking only about the benign ones so that is a good thing right they are not talking about the malignant ones only the benign ones and that uh, which are neoplastic look at these so here you have uh, squamous papilloma papilloma because of the papilloma virus and then you have chondroma hemangioma neurilemoma rhabdomyoma lipoma fibroma all are omas isn't it so can you say they all are benign yes benign conditions if they were malignant conditions what would have been their names guys if they are malignant their names would have been like uh, carcinoma sarcoma right in this video we will cover the squamous papilloma because um, this is very important for the exam and this is also very common 80% of all these uh, will be uh, mostly uh, squamous papilloma so we need not look at the others uh, for now juvenile type and adult onset type in that uh, mainly juvenile type is very important okay because it is a recurrent condition adult one is not that uh, that dangerous let us look at the juvenile one here you have the human papilloma virus and look at this papilloma so similar right even the papilloma looks so similar to the virus this papilloma virus is actually a dna virus and it is uh, here they are talking about the type 6 and type 11 viruses this is the most common benign neoplasm of the larynx in children that's why juvenile right juvenile papillomatosis it's also called as recurrent respiratory papillomatosis r r r p so r r p what is r p uh, respiratory papillomatosis so what is the extra r here recurrent so it keeps recurring juvenile onset uh, recurrent uh, respiratory papillomatosis okay caused because of what uh, dna virus uh, pap human papilloma virus hpv 6 and 11 okay this uh, affects what and all you know it affects supraglottic glottic and subglottics so all the three up the glottis uh, glottis and below the glottis trachea and bronchi also it can involve so it can involve everything look at this image here this is an endoscopic view of a laryngeal papilloma in a child with rrp okay so what are we looking at uh, juvenile onset respiratory recurrent respiratory papillomatosis how did this uh, uh, hpv infection come to the baby because of vaginal delivery usually the first uh, born child will get nice virus because it will stay longer in the birth canal and uh, also it can happen in children who had tracheostomy for respiratory distress due to laryngeal papilloma so if they had a tracheostomy that is also can happen that they got the virus okay so tracheostomy also can lead to vaginal birth okay and then tracheostomy for respiratory distress due to laryngeal papillomas have higher incidence of tracheal and stromal involvement due to seeding so they had the tracheostomy because of the laryngeal papilloma and because of that they have higher incidence of tracheal and stromal involvement okay so the trachea also got involved okay dna particles sorry dna virus particles have been found in the cells of the basement membrane of the respiratory mucosa and may account for widespread involvement and recurrence so this virus has gone and sat nicely in the respiratory mucosa so again and again it will keep recurring this incident that's why this recurrent juvenile onset recurrent respiratory papillomatosis okay so who is coming here a uh, patient <clears throat> age three to five years presents with hoarseness or aphonia with respiratory difficulty or even strider what is strider uh, noise because of turbulent flow in the uh, respiratory tract strider is noisy respiration produced due to turbulent airflow through the narrowed air passages so here we are telling what is affected it can be supraglottic it can be uh, uh, glottic or it can be subglottic so it can be all the three so even up it can be here it can be here it can be the uh, papilloma so all the three can be affected right so in strider causes you can see acquired causes you have papillomatosis okay so we got this the patient is often a child between the age of three to five years presence with hoarseness or aphonia or with respiratory difficulty or even strider a diagnosis how will you do flexible fiber optic laryngoscopy and later you will confirm this with uh, direct laryngoscopy and biopsy remember biopsy very important right papillomas are known to uh, known for recurrence the uh, recurrence is the main problem here right uh, but they don't undergo malignant change which is a good thing treatment let's move on to treatment now main thing here uh, they want to maintain a good airway right uh, because the airway is getting blocked good airway they have to maintain they want to also preserve the voice 
right and they want to avoid recurrence this is the main thing they want to avoid recurrence so here what they are talking about is debrider remember debrider so you want to remove all those uh, uh, growths right the papillomas and then uh, they can, they are also talking about carbon dioxide laser micro laryngoscopy and um, some adjuvants interferon alpha this also you should remember okay remember debrider interferon alpha carbon dioxide laser micro laryngoscopy all these are the ways of treat, treating this condition okay so we are done with um, this uh, juvenile papilloma respiratory right uh, that's under squamous papilloma it's a non neoplastic condition isn't it so it's a neoplastic sorry sorry it's a neoplastic condition but it is benign condition it will not become malignant okay so we're done with juvenile what and all we saw in juvenile most common benign neoplasm in larynx in children because of the hpv virus 6 and 11 types it's affecting everything glottis supraglottic subglottic trachea bronchi you can see it in vaginal deliveries in tracheostomy uh, higher incidence of tracheal involvement will be there tracheal involvement is more if there is uh, done tracheostomy you have done dna particles have been found in the respiratory mucosa that is why all this uh, recurrence so how will the patient present 3 to 5 years so hoarseness of voice aphonia respiratory difficulties try the how will you diagnose do fiber fiber optic laryngoscopy flexible fiber optic laryngoscopy then you can uh, do la direct laryngoscopy do biopsy and check papillomas are known for recurrence i think here in biopsy you can also draw some nice papillomas and show the uh, microscopy histology Papillomas are known for recurrence. Uh, yes, uh, that is the problem here, but they re rarely undergo malignant change. How will you treat a debrider, interferon, alpha, uh, carbon dioxide, laser, micro laryngoscopy? Here, basically, you want to maintain the airway, preserve the voice, and avoid the recurrence, right? Now, let us look at adult onset papilloma. Look at squamous papilloma. Some images from the path lab. Squamous. Squamous. Papilloma. Papilloma. Benign tumor. Benign tumor of epithelium, I think. Of epithelium. Epithelium. See here, they are showing hyperkeratosis, papillomatos, something. Hyperplastic squamous epithelium, fibroblast, blood vessel, fiber, fibrovascular core. It'll have. Oh yeah, the papilloma has a fibrovascular core. Okay. Now let us look at this adult onset papilloma, guys. These adult onset papillomas, uh, they are single smaller in size less aggressive and does not recur okay let's look at these they are single smaller yes they look smaller less aggressive they don't recur if you remove them correctly okay that is a good thing it is common in males two to uh, males males it's common age group 30 to 50 years look at this man uh, male uh, 30 to 50 years usually male um arises from anterior half of the vocal cord or anterior commissure so where is the anterior part mostly anterior they are saying this is anterior commissure right here it's meeting so this is anterior commissure this is posterior commissure anterior only it will affect more they are saying treatment is same as juvenile type so treatment what they will do they will try to remove this debridement then give some interferon uh, alpha because uh, they want to attack this virus right carbon dioxide laser then what else micro micro laryngoscopy no they cannot see the virus but how can they see the virus no they, they cannot see the virus they can only see this papilloma and they will remove it the virus will be inside this papilloma okay so that's all guys we have seen the papillomas adult and juvenile onset let's take a recap we wanted to look at the non neoplastic tumors of uh, larynx, non neoplastic benign tumors of larynx, squamous papilloma, juvenile type, adult onset type, other names if they ask, you'll have to write chondroma, hemangioma, all these neurilemoma, rhabdomyoma, lipoma, fibroma, all those omas you have to write. Uh, mainly you have to remember squamous papilloma, it can be juvenile or adult onset type. Juvenile, uh, adult, uh, juvenile recurrent respiratory papillomatosis, uh, children because of HPV virus. Then uh, how will you fix it also we told you. Then adult also we told you. That's all for now in this video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.